pre-essential diets, and this is the post-essential diet. Sit. Yes. The longitudinal official goes like this. So you're taking the brain. If I slice it right here, central focus goes like this, right? Yes. It looks weird. Yes, exactly. That is how it's being represented. Okay, so, why did I highlight this area? Because it's important. Because it's important, and he's absolutely right. So here we go, we take the brain, we're pushing it up this way. This line is supposed to be my central sulcus. Mm -hmm. And then we have Pre-central gyrus is your primary motor. Post-central gyrus is primary sensor. What does that mean? Sensor for, for um, touch, sense of touch. Sense, your senses, right? Okay, so your sense of touch. If you look at the picture in the book, it's really cool looking. I can't draw that in a million years, but you're gonna see all the sensors have dedicated areas. So that's your central, that is your longitudinal fissure here, and then you can see all the parts of your body lined up. Okay? That is where the senses are gonna go. Into this area. And then what do I have after it? Sensory association. What does that mean? You associate something with the same. You're associating something with the sense, all right? That makes perfect sense, okay? All right? I know I'm touching a hard wall. It feels a little rough and everything like that. These parts all have to interconnect for you to make sense of things. So sense, we're going to associate with something here. Two is going to associate with three. Motor association. What's it going to do? Gonna yeah, help. This line right here is my central point. All right? This is my primary motor area. The primary motor area gives your directions of what to do to the rest of your body, voluntary control, right? Because we're in the conscious brain here. Mm -hmm. What does this part do? Pretty motors, probably like thinking about it. Thinking about it. Motor can only give the directions to do it, but it's not the area that is going to give the directions to the directions. It's like, okay, I want to move my arm to the up, okay. The part that thought about moving the arm up was in here. And then he gives the order That's to important. here. And this one sends it to the rest of your body to move my arm up, all right? So we have, these are motor senses, and then we've got these parts back here. Six would be visual association, seven primary visual. Where's the information going in? The very back, the occipital lobe, right? Yes. When you get knocked out and stuff like that, when they're punching people in the head and you lose your vision for a while, why? Because your occipital lobe, the very back, the one that's getting the information in, hits the back of your skull and it shuts out for a little bit, then it goes back up. What's the visual association for? Associating what you see. Okay? I got the orange. I know it's an orange. I see the orange. All right? If this part messes up, could you still see something? Yes. Yes. You can still see it, but would you have any concept of what it is? No. You're doing great. This is pretty easy, right? Like, okay, this one is how going to put me in front of this. This one, this one, this one, this one. All right. Then we go a little further down. We're going to go to nine first. And there's your primary audio, okay? What does that mean? Temporal. Hearing. You're taking the hearing in. Association with the hearing. Associating with what you're actually hearing. My voice, okay? You know it's coming from me because of this part. Now, we got these two oddballs right here. Eight and eleven. And then we get to the first one, which is the cool one. All right, eight, the Broca area. This is one of the weird things that are only on the left side of your brain. Language. All right, and guess what that's associated with? Language. Uh, Language, and speech, speech, and writing. All right, 
it's going to be the director. It's going to say, it's going to learn the grammar that you're learning. It's going to be able to recognize words. It's going to do all that. If you mess up that part, you basically aren't going to talk much. Okay? You're going to be slow and everything like that because it only can send a little information to the next area. The broca is then heavily communicating with the Wernicke area. Wernicke. Wernicke area, okay? And that's 11. And guess what he's sort of close to? The premotor. The primary motor. The primary motor, okay? He's sort of close to that area. So guess what his job is to do? Talk to it. Set up your hands for writing and set up your mouth for talking. Oh, the Wernicke area? Yeah, the Wernicke area, okay? So the one that's sending the commands, like, okay, here's how we're going to form the sentence, here's what we're going to do. We send it to the Wernicke area. The Wernicke area looks at it, goes like, okay, how do I have to do this? Okay, I have to flex my muscle at this point, put the muscle up at this point. Okay, if I'm talking, I have to stress my tongue at this point, stick it out a little more. I have to vocalize everything. So does that talk to the same problem? It looks like fine. Fine motor controls. All this is working out. This area is constantly in communication with the cerebellum. The frontal cortex and the cerebellum are working together all the time. Feedback loops between the two of them. Who is the guy that mostly does the feedback? Um, What's that guy? Thalamus. Okay. He's the gatekeeper, and he's also the strong communicator between the two of them. Between the cortex and the... Uh, cerebellum, yes. That has to go through him. All right? So, that's what the Wernicke area is. If you have damage to the Wernicke area, guess what will happen? You can make lots of sentences and everything like that. They don't make any sense. Wait, wait, are you talking about the Wernicke? Or the yeah, the Wernicke area. Dog. The Broca area, you're going to have very trouble forming any kind of sentence, and you'll speak in very limited words. Okay. If you damage the Wernicke area, you that part of the brain, this one, the Broca, will still be functioning. But it's going to the Wernicke area, who has to make the plan of how to do it. And those are the muscles. Like the they're going to plan the muscles, they're going to plan the contractions and everything like that. But it doesn't work, so it's just saying, we get a signal, let's send somebody out. And they're like, why can't you understand me? <laughs> like the Sims. <laughs> like the Sims. Yeah, you're just like, wah, 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 wah. You can talk all you want, but it's not going to make any sense because your lips aren't moving the way you are, the muscles aren't going to contract. Your breathing's off, everything's messed up. Okay? Now, what did I, part did I leave off? Frontal association. What's so important about the frontal association? It makes you you, and it makes you relate to your entire environment. Okay? This, this is the ultimate integrator. Can you ever look at a great ape's forehead besides us? Okay, what kind of shape did you look at of the great ape's forehead? You ever notice how it slopes back? What do our foreheads do? Slope forward. Ours are pretty flat. Why are ours pretty flat? Our frontal lobe is more developed than the other great apes. They are. And that's why we have this flat skull in front of us like this. Because the brains make a little more space there. Good, okay, now we're bigger. This is one of the most important areas. It is telling your relation to environment. And it means like everything in the environment. Close your eyes and say orange. What do you think of? An orange. Orange what? Popsicle, Kool-Aid. Fruit, you think of a fruit. Kool what do you think of? Kool color? Does anyone think of a color? Does anyone think of a smell? Yeah. Does anyone think of a taste? And then you get a paper cut and that warm squirts in your... There's a memory associated with that? Or am I just talking about an orange? Color, taste, feel, everything. Are those in separate parts of your brain? Yes. You have a visual center, right? The visual knows what's going to look. 
You have a gestation center, which I didn't even talk about, which is going to talk about the taste. You have an auditory center. You have a smell center, an olfaction center. All of those are separated. All the associations are separated. But where do they all come together? The frontal cortex. Okay. Another important thing for this is this a, it makes you you. Okay, so ever hear about that miner who had the little explosion with TNT? He was a nice guy until a giant pipe went through his frontal cortex. Mm. And then afterwards, he was a complete a-hole. Or Jack. Blake. Jack A. Okay? It blew a hole in his prefrontal cortex. Do you know what he no longer can do? Sympathize. He can no longer sympathize. He no longer can understand what is normal human relationships. Do humans have complex relationships? Yes, trust me. Do we have to be able to recognize people's faces? We have that limbic system, but that's also going to take a part in the prefrontal cortex. All of that has to be worked out in there. And if that messes up, I don't even know if I'm being rude. This is one of my fears half the time. Am I being rude? And you always think about your emotions. What am I doing with my life? I'm so nervous. Who is all that? Right there. Prefrontal emotions. cortex giving you a hard time. Okay? That's the important area. Big synthesizer. Cortex. Do I have a lot of information there? Yeah. Okay, so. With that example of, yes. <coughs> so, whenever you're like actually looking at something, right? Mm -hmm. Is that the, do you use the same part of your brain as whenever you like think of an image of something? If you think of an image of something, you're usually gonna use more of your visual association and stuff like that. Okay. And then you're gonna also use your frontal cortex to give them information. So you're going to use both of them. But, yes? Does the Wernicke area also um, associate the muscles associated with writing? Yes. Just... Yes. Okay. Writing and speech. Or sign language. That's how we're communicating and everything like that. So it's very important for all that jazz. But if I want to hear is writing and speech. Writing and speech, and then this sign is also, is it's a language. Oh. Yep, so sign language. I think, I think he's going to use that as a test question. Mother, and then, <laughs> I'm always watching the with sign language person in mass. It's sort of fun to watch here. <laughs> or write, or do sign language. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's funny. You would just have constant gibberish. He said he watches the person silent with okay. church. Okay, oh! So I have, these guys are on the left side of the brain. But also the Wernicke area and the Broca area. They're on the left side. Can't you sing? What? Yeah, can't you still sing if the Broca area is messed up so you can like train your brain to like turn singing into talking? I don't know. Sure. I know like some people like with um because like, singing is a different like part of your brain than oh, that. I didn't hear that. That's cool. Oh, yeah, cool. I know like someone like with the stutter, they like they can't talk, but like when they sing they don't have a stutter. Oh that's nice. Yeah. Cool. They probably will start with the brick area. There you go. Okay, so where was I gonna go on with this? Darn it. Oh, the right side of the brain. Guess what the right side of the brain is? Art, yeah, art, creativity. Creativity and things like that. So they have that old-fashioned view where there's a left-sided person, very analytical, and the right-sided person's that. That's not that black and white anymore. They're still focusing on sides of the brain. But the right side that corresponds to the Broca area and the Wernicke area, guess what that's associated with? Hmm? Yeah? Writing's all normal, too. Okay. Oh, no, I can't. I'm thinking of jokes from the crow, which are not good jokes. Um, hi, stupid joke. Come on. Who's there? I don't know. All right. Maybe a stupid five-year-old joke. Anyone? Knock, knock. Who's there? The cow and the cow. Who? Okay. So, what did she just do? She just gave a really bad joke. All right. How many of you guys recognize it as a joke? You did? 
I think it was funny. You're dead? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a bad joke, but it's a joke, right? The right side of your brain in the Broca area and the Wernick area, it's for associating motion, emotions with language. If the Wernick area is a basically right side version can't do it, you don't know it's a joke. If you're like, you know, oh my god, I'm so sad, blah, 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 you know, and you're crying when you're talking, when you're crying and you're talking, do you know that person is sad? Yeah. Yes, because you can associate the emotion with the language. But guess what? <clears throat> On the right side of that area is broken, guess what you can't do anymore? Associate language with emotion. You can't tell if something's sad or if a person is sad. Yes? So is this underdeveloped in people like that? Usually that's going to be which part of the brain? The amygdala. So the amygdala is the one that's really important for understanding emotions and memories and everything like that. They'll have less empathy. But this part might be functioning just fine. Okay. Yes. 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 It's one of the four basal nuclei. All right. Quiet down. What? Is there a name for those areas? Which one? Like the ones that's opposite of Wernick and Broca. Yes, there are, but I'm not going to ask you those names. Don't worry about them. This is just a fact to keep you. That's cool that there's another side. You hear that? that? Okay. That's not important. Wait, so okay. Wernick is emotions and language, or is the other side? The other side. They have associated sides with it. So the left side, you have the Broca and you have the Wernick. The other side is associating emotion with your language. Which she doesn't talk about, that's why I'm like, I know that. <laughs> I just think it's a cool fact because I love emotions. All yeah, right. Me too. Now, that's basically all I want you to know for the prefrontal cortex. Okay? It's not that bad. Good thing to know for the test is all the information is going to go to the thalamus, comes up here. I'm going to set an order to go back down through here all the way through here. Know the paths, all right? If something's wrong in the thalamus, can you talk, talk to your cortex much? No. no. If there's something wrong with a part of one of those ascending tracks, what are you gonna get? Sensory information or motor information? Sensory, Sensory. information. If, you, if there's something wrong with the motor here, what's gonna happen? You're not gonna have as much movement not going to be a move, paralysis. Mm -hmm. So just think logically, okay, I know the path up and I know the path down. Mm -hmm. I know what areas are going to have problems. Sometimes do multiple areas have similar functions? Yes. So my multiple choice, there's going to be some where it's going to be like, this has a similar function. I know this has to do with that function. This has to do with that function. This has nothing to do with the function. Circle that one. Okay, does that make sense? All right. I'll be ask the question of like, which one's not associated with heart rate or something like that. Okay, Oops. temperature regulation, boom. So we have all this. Now, what's the other thing I have to talk about? Cerebral spinal fluid. Yes. This is gonna be released quickly. 